In this video, we're going to talk about how we write recursive list procedures in Scheme. So before we do that, let's define a list. And we'll define a list with just one, two, three, four in it. So we can find the car of that list and the cutter of that list. And again, the car returns the first element of the list. The cutter returns the list with the first element removed. So you see we get one for the car and the cutter is the list two, three, four. Now, what if we just have one element? The car of the list with just A in it is A, and the cutter of that list is the empty list, because again, it's the list with the car removed. And I'll copy that into our code, just so that it's there. And I meant for that to be an A. So if I run this, you can see the result of the car and cutter of the list with just A in it. And we can check to see if a list is null, And we'll ask if the empty list is null as well. And what you'll see is a list with something in it, list, is not null. But the empty list is null. We'll use that concept as we're writing our list procedures. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write a list procedure that goes through the list but doesn't do anything. It just returns the list. And the reason we're doing this is because I want you to see the structure of these procedures because the structures themselves are going to be pretty consistent. And so if you identify how that pattern works, it's going to make writing list procedures a lot easier for you. So if we're going to do nothing to a list, the easiest case, our base case, is going to be if we have an empty list because we can just return the empty list if the list is null. Otherwise, we're going to cons the car of the list back onto doing nothing with the cutter of the list. So we make a recursive call here on the cutter. Now, since we're not doing anything, to the list, this should return the cutter, and we're going to cons the car with the cutter, which should give us our original list. Again, it doesn't do anything, but that's the point. I want to show you the general structure, and then we can actually have this procedure do more things, but all we have to do is modify one of these pieces, either what we do to combine the car and the cutter together, or perhaps we do something with the car before we do that combining. So our do nothing will work like this. Suppose we want to do nothing with A, B, C, and D where we're going to take A out and do nothing with B, C, and D. And with this call, we're going to take B out and do nothing with C and D. And with that, we take C out and do nothing with D. And then finally, we take D out and we do nothing with the empty list. So at this point, we just have that empty list, and we're going to return the empty list. As we unravel that recursion, we're going to add D back to the list. That is what happens when we do nothing with this list. And then we're going to con C back to that and B and A until finally we get the list A, B, C, D as our result. Again, we did nothing with the original list, but you'll notice we actually used that procedure to go through the list. So let's see how that works out in code. So we'll define do nothing to be a procedure that takes a list as a parameter. And if the list is null, then we're going to return the empty list. Otherwise, we're going to cons the car of the list to the result of a recursive call on the cutter of the list. So we'll do nothing with the list. And we'll do it with a couple lists that we make up. We'll say 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And let's even make a list 3 plus. We'll have a symbol. We'll have a string. And we'll have another. Actually, let's have a floating point number here. So when I run this, you can see that I get those lists back, which is what I would expect. Again, we're not doing anything with the list here. Now, we're going to, in our list procedures, just check to see if they're null. If you pass a non-list to a list procedure, I'm going to go with the theory that that procedure should return an error. However, maybe you want to check if a parameter is a non-empty list. And we won't use this a whole lot, but we could use this if we wanted to write a function that returned the sum of a list. Well, maybe if it's not a list, you just return whatever it is. In our case, our examples are going to return errors. But you could do something like this to check not only that it's not empty, but also that it's actually a list. So we'll define non-empty list. And that'll take a list as a parameter. And it's going to return the result of not. Is this not a list? 
or is it null? And if either of those cases are true, then this or statement evaluates to true, so this not would evaluate to false. So here's some test code that we can try. Let's pass an empty list, a list with one, two, three, four in it. Actually, let's change this because I think that's the same as list. So let's say A, B, C, D in this non empty list. And let's do one more call. So let's use this list here because that has everything in it. So we just want to show that it's not just the fact that it's a list of atoms. There can be other non atoms in there. And when I run this, you'll see that this is not a non empty list and that this is not a non empty list, but that everything else is a non empty list. Again, meaning that it's not null and it's also a list. Again, I won't be using this a whole lot, but it's something I wanted to show you just in case you wanted to write your procedures so that they didn't cause an error if you pass a non list to the function. So you could use non empty list in place of null as your check for your base case. Our next procedure is going to be called duplicate list, and it's going to duplicate every element in the list. So here we have the list A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. So we return A, A, B, B, C, C, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 3. So the structure of that function, our base case again will be the null list. But when we combine those lists, we're going to cons the car of the list to a cons of the car of the list with the recursive call. So we're actually consing the car of the list back on the result twice. So let's see what that looks like. So we're going to define duplicate list. It's going to take one parameter. And if the list is null, then we return the empty list. Otherwise, we cons the car of the list with the result of consing the car of the list with a recursive call on the cutter of the list. I really like this list, so let's use that as one example. And we'll also duplicate the list we defined above. So when we run this, you can see that everything in the list gets duplicated. The little schemer has a function called remember, and that removes the first instance of an element from a list. So our base case, again, if we remove something from an empty list, we get the empty list back because there's nothing to remove. But we have two cases here. The first case is the car of the list equal to the element. And if it is, we're just going to return a recursive call on the coder of the list. So then if we if the list isn't null, we're going to check to see if the car of the list is the element. If it is, then we're going to return the coder of the list. Again, so that would be the list with that first element removed, which we've already determined is the element that we're trying to remove the first instance of. Otherwise, we're going to cons the car back onto the list, and we're going to remove that element from the coder of the list. So here, we're removing 4 from the list. So 2 is not equal to 4. 3 is not equal to 4. But 4 is equal to 4. So we're going to return the cutter of the list in this case. And then we're going to cons the 3 back and then the 2 back as we unravel the recursion. And that gives us the list 2368. So let's see what that looks like in code. So we're going to define remember to be a function that takes two parameters, an element and a list. And there's three conditions. The first is, is the list null, in which case we're going to return the empty list. The next condition, and we'll use equal here just because it'll handle more cases. So we'll say, is the car of the list equal to the element we're looking for? If it is, we're going to return the coder of the list. And otherwise, the list isn't empty. The car isn't what we're looking for. So we're going to cons the car back onto the list and make a recursive call with the same element, but the coder of the list. So this will look for it in the rest of the list. So let's remove one from list and four from the list. And let's remove a one from the list. One, two, actually, let's just have a whole list of ones. Let's remove hello from this list. And then let's remove the addition operator from this list. So we run this and you can see here we remove hello, here we've removed the addition operator. So another one from the little schemer, what if we want to check to see is this a list of atoms, meaning there's nothing other than an atom in our list. 
So our base case is going to be the empty list. And if it's the empty list, then yeah, we'll call that a list of atoms. There's zero atoms there. Then next, we're going to call the atom predicate to check to see is the car of the list an atom. If it is, okay, then we'll continue to check the rest of the list. But if the car of the list is not an atom, then we're going to return false because there's nothing for us to do. We've discovered something that's not an atom in the list, and so we're going to need to return false because that's not a list of atoms. So first we need to define an atom predicate, and that's going to take one parameter, and we're just going to return is the parameter both not a pair and not null. And you may wonder, why don't we say a list here? All lists are pairs except for the empty list, and so this will work, and that's something we'll talk about later in this module. But if you wanted to add a case there to check if it wasn't a list as well, that would work. Three should be an atom. Hello is a string. World is a symbol. But the list, one, two, three, four, and the empty list, and again, I should make this list A, B, C, D. And then let's also check if our list that we defined is an atom. So if we run this, you can see that these are all atoms and these are all not atoms. So now let's write our function. It's going to take one parameter, a list, and we're going to have three different cases. The first case is the list null, we'll return true. Next is the car of the list an atom, then we're going to check to see the rest of the list. So we'll return lat of the coder of the list. Otherwise, the list isn't null, and the car isn't an atom, so we'll return false, because that's not a lat if it's not null and the first element is not an atom. So for some test code, we'll check to see if this list of numbers is a list of atoms. Here's a list of a bunch of things that we've seen before, and here we're going to make a list out of our list we defined and another list. So if you want to see what that is equal to, we can actually copy that into the REPL. And so you can see that's a list with two lists in it. And if we run this, we can see that everything is a list of atoms except for this case, because this is a list that's made up of other lists. So suppose we want to return a list with only the numbers. So our structure is actually going to be very similar to what we just saw. So let's define only nums to be a lambda. And if the list is null, then we'll return the empty list. And I'm not going to use a cond here. I'm going to use a nested if statement. So if it isn't null, I'm going to have another if statement. And I'm going to ask, is the car of the list a number? And if it is, back onto only the numbers of the cutter. If the car of the list is not a number, then I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to call only nums on the cutter of the list. So one last example, suppose we want to write our own member function. So we'll define member to be a procedure that takes one parameter and the conditions are going to be if the list is null, then the element's not a member of the list. I need to pass two parameters, the element and the list. Next, if the car of the list is equal to the element, we're going to return true. Otherwise, if the element is a member of the cutter of the list, we'll also return true. And finally, the element we're looking for is not the car. The list isn't empty, and it's not in the cutter of the list either. So that means, in every other case, we have false. So I'll look for 1 and 4 in our list, and they're both there. But what about 5 in the list? So 5 isn't in that list. So what about if we have nested lists? So here, let's look for the list 3, 4 in this list. It's there. 5 is in this list, but 7 is not. So let's see what we get. So you see that 3, 4 is a member of this list. 5 is a member of this list. And 7 is not a member of this list. Now, if I did something like, is 4 a member of this list? I'm going to get false because 4 doesn't appear in this list. It's inside this list, but that's the, an element of the outside list. So this list has four elements, 1, 2, the list 3, 4, and 5. None of those is actually 4.